Hey Rum fam, welcome back to the channel. Today, uh, rum review, I am going for Bacardi four-year-old. Now it's a rum that hasn't had a lot of love on my channel. I quite openly talk about Bacardi 8 quite a bit on the channel. But the whole reason I'm doing this, I'm doing this in the same session, and they'll drop at different times as when I've done the Lost Years, uh, the two Lost Years rums. Uh, and it also sort of similar applies to this. It's getting towards the end of the bottle. And I kind of want to know, am I going to restock it? So I'm revisiting this. I've probably not had this neat for quite a few months again. It's gone in cocktail tests, but I've not really kind of approached it neat. Is it a decent neat sipper? Bearing in mind that's how I drink, uh, predominantly drink a lot of my rums. Yes, I do have the occasional sort of, I do like a daiquiri, but I very rarely drink mixers at home or anything like that. Cocktails, again, rarely. I'm all about neat sipping. So for this, you know, Let's be brutally honest, it's an absolute steal. I'm looking at the Master of Malt price here. Master of Malt, £23. You know, you for a four-year-old rum, £23, you know, you've got plenty of unaged rums that are, you know, well more expensive than what this is. So, you know, Bacardi, Puerto Rico, you know, I can't give you much more kind of knowledge in that. Column still rum. There's not really much more knowledge to be had uh, when it comes to Bacardi rums, unless you, you know, you you could go down the whole Bacardi story about Bacardi that used to be Havana and Cuba, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, let, let's not get into that. You can kind of deep dive in your own sort of things to find out about that. Let's let's just really focus on this rum. Now, I, I say a touch there with the Lost Years. There's a reason why. I kind of wanted to visit this, a apart from do I want to restock it as it's getting nearly empty, because the, the last Lost Years I did was the Aribada, and it was all column still, and I was getting no fruit off that rum at all, which I kind of thought instantly was a bit of an anomaly. I, I kind of do associate a little bit of fruit with those column still. But the, the nose on it was kind of, and the taste on it was like this honeyed, vanilla -y, oaky kind of vibe to it and I think and from my recollection that's kind of what this was giving me I don't I, I was quite surprised when I went up to the Bacardi 8 that that I remember that that had a bit of fruit to it and I didn't think it, this did so this is going to be my first nosing for quite a few months so I've got no idea how this is going to go so let's have a little smell and yeah it's exactly the same sort of thing that I don't really get there might be a faint, a faint, faint whiff of stone fruit off there. But it is vanilla-y. I get that honey vibe again. I kind of like that. I've picked that out quite a lot recently. Like a honeyed uh, vanilla, a honeyed oak. A slight sort of spe uh, spicy tingle, but generally not a lot else going on. But on the same token... It does smell really inviting, and there's nothing in there which will put me off kind of sipping it. I kind of want to have a little smell, and I'm thinking, do you know what? This could actually be quite tasty. Or I'll tell you what, second nose, I take that back. Actually, I do get the second, I do get the stone fruit coming off there. This, how do I get It's kind of not burying my nose right in, sort of, sort of there, just off the top of the glass. That's the aroma. It's really weird. You bury your nose right in. And it's like honey, honey vanilla, but you sort of have it around here. And that's that's where the sort of stone fruit vibe comes out. So there is a little bit there, but not a huge amount. I'm going in for it. I, I don't think I'm going to pick anything else out. Um, and for a four-year-old, at that price point, you probably wouldn't expect to be that complex anyway. Um, but let's dive in. Let's have a little taste. Well, the one thing, the one thing that got hit me straight away, that's a hell of a lot sweeter than the Lost Years Aribada. A hell of a lot sweeter. Now, I don't think this is extremely dosed. Um, I don't think... I, I think we're talking roughly like six to eight grams of sugar. If that. I don't know what Bacardi do. I haven't looked. You know, I'm not really... You know, it doesn't really matter too much in these videos. I don't want to get snobbish about stuff. But bearing in mind that last year's Aribada, and it was up to eight-year-old rum, so I dare say a couple of the rums were younger, 
Whereas this is a four-year-old, so the minimum age in this is a four-year-old four rum. So you predominantly are going to have a, a bit of older rum in here as well. So this shouldn't actually be too different, except that's a five-rum blend. This is a one-rum blend from Puerto Rico. But it is sweeter. Wow, it's, it's sweeter. You know, not even remotely close to being Diplomatico or anything like that. But there is that sweetness in there. But on the taste, honey. Honey, oaky, vanilla... I tell you what, it's really easy to drink. <laughs> it's got it's got quite a short finish to it. Let's be honest, the the the, the finish doesn't linger around too much. It's um, I think that's the reason why you you drink it quickly is because it's got such a short finish that you kind of need to go back for another sip to kind of remind yourself what it just tasted like. But um, I do think that's delicious. I think that's. A cracker for 20, £22.94, Master of Malt, I'm looking at here. £22.94, that for me, for neat sipping, is light years ahead of Appleton Signature, of Mount Gay Eclipse, all right, a different style of rum. But I would much rather have that in a glass than I would to either of those two. But to counterbalance that, let's be honest, even I did a video recently where I picked out Appleton eight year old on Amazon for 25 quid. I think normally that would be sort of 28 pounds. But, right, so if this is 23 pounds, Appleton eight year old at 20, say 28 pounds, 26, 27, 28, five pound, four, five pound difference. The Appleton eight has got a lot more quality to it than what this has. So for an extra fiver, say, you have got a, great, a, a sort of better run. But this, do you know what? 20, 20, that's really got my head thinking now. £23. Is there another rum that I would put at that price point that is equally as nice to kind of sip neat? Bearing in mind, they don't really market this as a neat sipper. It is kind of their cocktail rum. You know, that for me is going to be absolutely de delicious as a rum and ginger ale. I dare say rum and coke as well. Pro more so probably rum and coke. My go-to is a rum and ginger ale. That's going to make an absolutely smashing rum and ginger ale. I know that's going to be a great rum and coke. It's got the profile to be a rum and coke rum. I Yeah, I, I think that's a straight down the line quality mixing rum. A lot of you are going to have absolutely zero problems at all buying that as a mixer rum. And that's something different, you know, because we are conditioned at that price point to think probably kind of you know your your Appleton signature your Mount Gay Eclipses uh, I'm just trying to think plantation plant even plantations a little bit more expensive these days the OD I'm just trying to think direct compar comparisons actually for, of supermarkets and what you get I think I think we've got to go the Santiago de Cuba 8 which I think is a, a little bit of an unfair comparison in there um what else? Havana seven-year-old, uh, roughly the same price point. I, for me, as I openly say, I'm not a hugest Havana seven-year-old fan. So the Picardi Four does edge it for me on that. It, it's something about the Havana Seven that just doesn't sit well with me. I think it's too oaky, too feisty, too dry. Too, even though it's got a sweetness to it, it just it just doesn't work for me for that run for some unknown reason. It never has done. Um, but this does, I really do like this. I understand from a sipping rum point of view, you know, look, let's, let's be honest here. If you're used to your four squares, your Eldorado 12s, your Eldorado, four, um, Eldorado 12, Eldorado 15s, your Dorleys 12, 14s, your Appleton 8s, 12s, if you're used to that style of rum as a sipping rum, then this is too, this hasn't got the character to stand up to that. I'm not making those comparisons. I'm not ma I'm not saying that this is in the same, same realms as a sipping rum as any of those. Even the Chairman's, I always forget to mention them, but the Chairman's Forgotten Cast, the Chairman's Legacy, this is no way in the same realms as those. But if you are in, if you do sip or use Appleton Signature, Appleton, uh, Appleton Signature, Mount Gay Eclipse, those kind of rums as your mixing rums, and you want something slightly different with a different flavour profile that you could sip neat or with an ice cube or as a rum fashioned, then generally have a look at this because, you know, I 
I'm not fussy, you know, I'm not a rum snob. I'm not going to dismiss something like this because, you know, it's Bacardi. We associate Bacardi with white rum, which isn't very good. People just naturally assume the Bacardi 4 and the Bacardi 8 isn't that good either. They are wrong because Bacardi Carta Blanca, is that what it's called? I think, yeah, Bacardi Carta Blanca, the white, does for me give Bacardi a bad name. It's a decent... 13, 14 pound white rum. It shouldn't be much more than that. It's not going to set the world on fire. It does a job. But this is, for me, is a huge golf in step up in quality. And the eight is again. So don't dismiss the Bacardi 4 at all. 23 pounds, you know, for those of you that like your floor, any of you that like your column stills, your floor de carnies, what other column stills have we got here? Uh, Havana, um, any of the top shelf that are not on camera, but any sort of the Venezuelan, the El Florida Carne, as I said, Nicaraguan rums, uh, any of those Dom Rep, Dominican Republic, you know, this is where this sits. I, I think this has to be a restock for me. I really do think, you know, there's a couple more drams in there. I think this does have to be a restock. I'm quite happy with that. I, as I say, that for me has got rum and ginger written all over it.